we thank you for this time before your feet. Open our understanding here tonight. Lay your hands upon our lives. In Jesus name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Tonight, just a slight departure from the topic we have been treating to something of utmost importance requiring serious warfare. And I want to encourage you that once the process of this prayer starts, don't let anybody's voice be louder than Because you can never tell the distance they have traveled in your destiny. And when an anointing is present at a meeting, it may not be available next time. Open your Bible, please, to Deuteronomy chapter 18. We are battling against two powers there. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm going to be reading from verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 18, from verse 10. Please listen to me very carefully and pray like a wounded lion. Deuteronomy 18, 10. If you are there, can you say yes? Okay. In the University of Affliction, there are nine main departments. There is a university in the dark realm, University of Affliction. It has nine departments. Let's look at these nine departments. In the Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, there shall not be found among you anyone, one, that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, sacrificing their children. Two, that used divination. Three, or an observer of times. Four, or an enchanter. Five, a witch. I didn't write all these things in the Bible. You can read it yourself there. And you can see that this has existed long, long time ago. They are not new. Six, or a charmer. Seven, a consulter with familiar spirits. Eight, a wizard. Nine, a necromancer. It would take us six weeks to take them one by one. And warfare is not fought like that. We're looking at two tonight. It's the battle against observer of times and enchanters. Or the battle against the enchanters and observer of times. The Bible says in Numbers 23:23, for those who want victory tonight, I want them to fix their name into that place. And shout it for everyone in hell and in heaven to hear. Just like I'm going to shout my own now. Surely there is no enchantment against Daniel Koya. Neither is there any division against Daniel Koya. Can you shout it again? Surely. Can you shout it again with your name? <laughs> Telling you that God Himself recognizes that there is a department in the dark world known as enchantment department. Divination department. Balaam wanted to cast the Israelites, but then God intervened. Why did God intervene? Because God knew 
that if that man went ahead with what he wanted to do, it would be so. That's why I'm praying for someone here. Every power of enchantment and divination against your destiny is buried tonight. In the name of Jesus. A sevenfolded man. So we are here tonight to fight. To fight. And you need to do that fighting if you must possess your possession. You need to fight if you must enlarge your coast. You need to fight if you must defend yourself and your territory. You need to fight if you must recover what the enemy has stolen. You need to fight because sometimes when there is no war, there is no peace. You need to fight, whether you like it or not, whether you are a gentleman or a gentlewoman, because we have a marching order from heaven to fight. It says, fight the good fight of faith. It says, the violent take it by force. Seven, you need to fight, because there is no gentle way of arresting evil and wickedness. The spirit of witchcraft and wizardry will not repent. They are pitching their camp against God. They have gone beyond the realm of divine forgiveness. So it's fight. You need to fight because the enemy of our soul as a soldier has declared war on us. He's declared war on us. You may not believe it, but it says war. Spiritual war. Some have been fighting from the womb. They are still fighting now. I pray. Every from the womb battle shall die tonight. <laughs> you need to fight. Because the only language the enemy understands is violence. And the only thing the enemy respects is power. Power. You need to fight to deliver yourself from bondage. Now, presently, please listen carefully. Presently, there is a rage of enchantment afflicting men and women. Men and women are going deeper and deeper into the occult. Many that you think look educated and decent, they only look like that in the day. In the night, they are not decent at all. They are evil and wicked. Enchantment agents are all over the place now, wrecking havoc. Someone came to come and tell me he wanted to marry. This was many years ago. So I said, okay, like my practice, so bring the bride to be. Let me see the wife you want to marry, so I can pray with you. So he, he came about a week later, but to my amazement, the woman he brought was heavily pregnant. I said she will deliver the next week. And I said, uh, why is your wife? That's why you are bringing. Where is this one? I said, uh, she's pregnant. This wife is about to deliver. I said, yes. Um, uh, she mistakenly got pregnant for somebody. But her parents did not want her to marry that person. At the same time, they don't want her to abort. So they asked me to marry her like that. And that after she has delivered this baby, we will go and give it to that man, then later, that the woman will deliver his own baby. I said, ah, are you all right? He said, yes. And I was hearing in my ears, son, enchantment, enchantment, enchantment. It looks strange, you didn't see it, but there are people who are enchanted to do things that are more strange than that. How do you explain, explain a man who has a good wife at home? Now he has been captured by one woman who has six children for six different men somewhere. And he does not come home again. That's why he sleeps. It is after all the salary has finished, then he will come home to his proper wife. There is no other name for that. It is enchantment. What is enchantment? 
is to chant against a person. To use magical spell against a person. And if you think magical spell is only something that they do in the witch doctor's house or in witch crack oven, you are lying. There are terrible books on the street people buy. People can go on the internet and get things that will make them witches and wizards. They can learn all kinds of magical spells against a person. A girl from the University of Lagos saw me at the airport and I saw her holding a man. The man was old and was holding the man and we were walking sluggishly towards the aeroplane. She saw me. I said, How's your look at her? I said, How are you? So fine. I said, what's happened to Grandpa? He said, no, that's my husband. I said, sorry. That man must be 80 or so. I'm talking of a girl around 22, 23. Enchantment. Enchantment is the condition of being put under a spell, under sorcery, under bewitchment, under magical spell, and the person will not know what is doing. All the issue of constant failure, constant sickness, constant evil, they are mostly products of enchantment. A greater percentage of sudden death, paralysis, madness, constant attack, heart attacks, they are result of enchantment. A lot of unexplainable tragedies in the work of enchantment. Somebody will sit down on a mat on the ground, and they will pick up the name of a person and they will start maybe midnight and they begin to chant against that person. So, 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 and so person. So, so, and so person. So, so, and so person. You will not succeed. The person will die. They will be saying it. They will say it. Saying it. All night. All night. Without standing up. Without drinking water. Without going to the toilet. It does it. They were. The tree is back again. Picking that person's name. And when they start this, and you don't know how to counter it, you begin to feel spiritually uncomfortable. You may feel as if somebody is firing needles into your body. You may find it difficult to sleep. It is enchantment. Men and women are now advancing this satanic technology. And I'm here to warn you that these hostile forces are increasing day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day. And pray that every rage of enchantment against anyone here will be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. This is a universal message. Anywhere you are in the world, there are charmers and enchanters there. You are the one who say you read science, you read physics, you read chemistry, you read biology. They've read all those things. They are now they have read another thing in addition. They have come to now understand that power lies in the spirit realm. Or else, how can somebody give you a small money? They call it charmed money. Just money. They give you that money. You add the money to your business, and the business develops wings and flies away. It's charmed money. Those of you are into business. Business of selling and collecting money. Selling and collecting money. You need to be soaking that money in the blood of Jesus before you take it to the bank. They can give you a small money that will empty every other thing left in that account. Why would one old Jabal, a man, was about to carry out the naming ceremony of his child? All of a sudden, he had a voice, say, go out. And he went out in the night, and they did not find him again. By the time the wife will start praying in the mountain of fire, the man will come back. The baby they were supposed to name was already three years old. He walked and walked and walked from Lagos until he got to Kano. I'm praying for somebody here. Any agenda of enchanter against you shall backfire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any blood drinking witch walking against you shall drink poison. In the name of Jesus. Listen, beloved. There are human vultures, human vampires, who delight in turning people to vitamins, 
tonic soft drinks. A normal human being, when he sees blood being shed, he shrinks inside. But do you know that there's some human beings? When they see blood being shed, they become excited. They are happy. And do you know that there are actually human beings who delight in drinking blood? I prophesy against every vulture, any human vulture, pursuing anyone here. I command them to be buried right now. In the name of Jesus. Let that table roll and turn down. Listen. This enchantment is a coordinating center of the ministry of the devil to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And this is a serious matter. While I was doing my PhD many years ago, specifically in 1983, I met a woman in church. She was looking so distressed. She was 27, 28. But she looked like a 50 year old. So I asked her, What was the problem? She said, It's my husband. She said, The man has not come out for three years. He locked himself in his room. He's supposed to do a PhD for three years. But he's been doing it for eight years. And they're about to throw him out. I said, Okay, I will come and see him. He said, He does not welcome anybody. He does not go to church anymore. He's lost confidence in church. He's lost confidence in men of God. I said I will come all the same. So I went. Fortunately, as I knocked the door, the wife was not there. He was the one who opened the door. So he couldn't run. I sat him down. I began to talk to him about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the power in the blood of Jesus to set free and to deliver. He listened to me carefully. After talking for about 20 minutes, he said, Everything you are saying, I know it. I was a Sunday school teacher. I said, but look at what is happening. The project, they don't want to welcome it. Every time I want to present it, there's a problem. The last time they brought a professor to look at my work, the professor looked at 200 slides, and out of the 200 slides, he said 199 was okay, and because of one that was not okay, the man said, no PhD. He said, you see that? I said, okay, let's pray. As we started praying, I had the voice again. Son, enchantment downstairs. Enchantment downstairs. So I now asked him, Who lived downstairs? Said, one, one man like that he doesn't greet us. I said, Okay. I'll see you next time. I went straight down and knocked that door. The man opened the door. I had a big beard, looking very scary. I greeted him well. I introduced myself. Oh, I said, come inside. He offered me a cup of coffee. I said, I didn't want. We sat down. We discussed, discussed, discussed. And I put a straight question. Excuse me, sir. That man upstairs. I'm talking about United Kingdom. I'm not talking about Nigeria. He said, that man upstairs. What has he done to you? I said, huh? How did you know? So what has he done to you? I said, listen. Daniel, that's your name. Say, let the enemy rest. The enemy will let you rest. Oh. Let sleeping dogs lie. Oh. I said, when Jesus was on earth, he went about waking up the sleeping dogs. I said, leave that man alone. All right, there'll be trouble. I said, okay. So I will now deal with you and I will deal with him. And he asked me to hear that man. I said, get out. This man was an occultic man. He sits down on the floor and every night, for three, three hours, he will be saying, Silas must fail. Silas must fail. Silas must fail. Three, three hours every day. And that was the problem. It was this warfare prayer was happening that got that man to be delivered. I'm praying that every satanic spy, satanic crystal ball, satanic mirrors working against you shall shatter in the name of Jesus. Amen. Roar like thunder. Amen. Now, the observer of times. Time is a crucial thing. We live in time. We are born in time. We exist inside time. We die in time. 
The observer of fence are those who have power to see your star. The star gazers. They rubbish people's times. No wonder that songwriter says, My times are in thy hands. They do not normally kill people. They dismantle their times and render it useless. They pollute and spoil the calendar of a man's life. They tear up the diary of a man's destiny. They manipulate and disrupt people's time. They tried it on Joseph. Only God delivered Joseph. Only God delivered him. Because they almost buried a star. The observer of times, they collect information and start working on it. They saw the star of Jesus. They saw everything. They saw that of Joseph. And they begin to follow that star. And praying that every observer of times, observing your life for evil plan and program, the evil detective, the star hunters, satanic reporters, shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let your amen go like thunder. Rise to your feet now. Rise to your feet now. The prayers we are going to pray now, they are not gentle prayers at all. They are not prayers to negotiate with the enemy. These are not negotiating prayers. Some are already under that yoke of enchantment. To use the popular Nigerian English, they are not getting themselves. You don't understand yourself. And that's why the enemy is just pushing you here and there. You have to rebel against being pushed here and there now. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here and you are not born again, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Right there where you are, just say this after me. Say, Father, I come before you, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. To say that short prayer with me, wait and see us after the service. And from anywhere you are connected to us, wait and see the pastor after the service. Can you now shout this loud and clear? Enchanter! You are a liar! In the name of Jesus! Yes! Open your mouth and decree. This is why Jesus brought you to this program. The power of God in the name of Jesus. Ooh. name we pray. I want you to be more aggressive. Powers! Chanting my name for destruction. Can you say this loud? Your time is up. In the name of Jesus. If he's chanting my name for destruction, your time is up. My power set River, it has sent the case. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. My son, tell her, I am a shake here. In Jesus' name we pray. When I say, get set, go. You will shout the name of Jesus seven times. On that seventh time, anyone here under the yoke of any enchantment, the power of God will fall upon you. You may not be able to stand on your feet, don't worry. But that yoke has to be broken right now. Won't you go? Aha! Lord Jesus! It's happening! Aha!
Aha. Jesus. Aha. Say this loud and clear. God pass. Hunting for my son. You are a lord. Die. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Bring us your manna water now and let your amen roar like fire. This particular water has a double function the normal manna water signs and wonders, and for the yoke of observer of times and enchantment to be broken. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, my potter the carido In the beginning, the spirit of God moved upon the waters. Father, let your spirit move upon this water in the name of Jesus. Let it break the yoke of enchantment, the yoke of sorcery, the yoke of divination, the yoke of infirmity, the yoke of affliction. By taking this water, let this yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let the cleansing power of God flow into this water. Let the fire of God flow into this water. Let the power of God flow into this water. In the name of Jesus. Silence. Let's hold the water. When I want you to say amen, it should be 21 amen. But hold the water now. Maponda katenda yaba. Ribosa de katenda kapon de kaya boshan teraba mana riboso pon de kaya papila kapon tasa daribo la katenda ka de senta li katenda ya boshanda ribosa pila katenda kaya mana kantea father let the fire of the God of Elijah flow into this water in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After sharing the grace now, drink the all of this water. It's not a water to take home. Thank you, Jesus. Let us share the grace in fellowship.